All right, so this is a, a drum lesson going over um, the snare solo tornado. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on it with a student um, one section at a time. And so the idea for my purposes is anyone who is a student of mine that's working on this can use this video to help them study at home. Um, also, I have a group of about five students that are going to be uh, hopefully playing this for a um, concert coming up in a few months. So this video is supposed to aid them with it. One of the things that I want to emphasize is even though I'm not going to be playing any of this up to the tempo marking written on the page, um, the most important thing is that everything is played cleanly and accurately. The speed is something that can always be worked on later. So we're going to do this one section at a time. So the first section, it's um, measure one through A. This is the part and how it goes. So what you want to try to do is, um, hopefully I'm going to be perfect and play all my parts right. If uh, my student here messes up, disregard his mistakes. But this is meant to sort of be a live uh, drum lesson, so pretend you're the student who I'm teaching right now. Okay, so we're going to do uh, the beginning up to A. Are we going to repeat here? Yes, we're okay. going to do, well it's, it's uh, first measure, then the first inning. First measure, then second ending, and then we're going to stop. So our, ob our objective right now is to get that as good as we can at a slow tempo. Okay. Okay, and we're going to play it together. One, two, one, and two, and ready, and go, and. So what you want to watch out for is, because we're playing it slow, when you get to beat four of the second ending, you want to make sure that you give that uh, little space between the first eighth note and the four note roll um, some, some room there. So the second ending will sound like this. Let's play that together, just the second ending. One, two, ready, and go. All right, you jumped in a little bit too early on that okay, roll. Yeah. It'll be like uh, You can almost take a breath there. There's so much space. Now, when you play this faster, obviously, there won't be so much space. It'll be kind of like this. So it won't be as much space, but we're playing it slow so we can be accurate. So let's do that second inning again. We'll go one. Two second inning. One yeah. and two and ready and go. Dude, okay. Yeah, I went too late there. So, um, for the purposes of this video, what you want to do is now that I've recorded the whole first segment for you with counting it off and explaining a few things, if you need to work on that section some more, actually rewind the video to that part and just do that part again. Okay, we're going to move on. We're going to move on and do section A to section B. And I think what I want to do is treat this uh, one measure at a time. So the first measure of section A is going to be this. So let's make sure we can play that as well as I just did it. One, two, ready. Great. So that sounded good. Um, what you want to do though is make sure the accents pop out so the other notes need to be unaccented. So it needs to be a lot more contrast there. Let me play it by myself. One, two, three, four. So when you're practicing at home, make sure you're popping those accents out. Okay, the second measure of A has rolls combined with paradiddles and then a single uh, lick at the end. So you have this. So let's try doing that. One, two, ready, go. Let's do it again. One, two, ready, and go. All right, 
not too bad. So work, work on that at home, just to tighten it up, make the accents pop out by applying the softer notes as soft as you can. Okay, the third measure of section A is very similar to the first one, uh, but we have a, a different sticking combination. Instead of playing double paradiddles, you have paradiddle diddles. Now there is a crescendo written in there, but I'm kind of ignoring it at the moment. We'll work on that stuff later for performance purposes. Let's try that. One, two, ready. All right, good. So just rewind that and play that again if you need to work on it. Okay, the fourth measure of section A, um, even though they're written in groups of six, these aren't six tuplets or triplets. They're just a group of 30-second notes that they put into groups of six uh, just for, um, I guess, printing purposes. But they're just a bunch of paradiddle diddles. It sounds like this. So if I'm counting it off, it'll be one... So let's try playing that together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, do it again, go. So that's something to practice, okay? Yeah. All right, section B. Section B is a, sometimes we might call it like a flam jam because it's got a lot of funky flam stuff in it. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and play B, actually, just the first measure and the second measure together so you can hear what it sounds like. And then you repeat that. So the first measure of it is this. Okay, so let's try playing that together. First measure of B. Okay, we need to clean it up, but that wasn't too bad. Let's do it one more time. One, two, ready, go. All right, that was better, and that's what you want to shoot for is making things better every time you do it. Okay, the second measure of B goes like this. So let's do that. One, two, ready, go. Do it again. One, two, ready, go. All right, very good. One more time. One, two, ready, go. All right. So for section B, the first two measures, you play them together and then you repeat them. Then when you get to measure three, four, five, and six, you basically have a long roll. So here's the first measure of that long roll. So this would be measure three. And then measure two is. And then measure, um, well, measure two of the roll. And then the last two measures of B is just the same thing as that long roll. So um, the first two measures of that long roll go like this. And then you just repeat those. So me and the student here, let's play uh, the first measure of the roll and the second measure of the roll. Do you think you can go ahead and play the next two after that? Yeah. All right, so we're going to do the four measures of this roll deal, but the first half and the second half is just a repeat of each other. So it'll be... So we're just going to do that. One. Two, one, and two, and ready, and go, and. All right, good. That was awesome. 
So you should go back and practice that if you need help on it. And just to give you an idea of how fast this is going to end up when you start playing this up to speed, you're going to go about like this. And what I want you to focus on is how open all of those diddles, um, the open stroke roll is. That's super important, especially if you're going to play it in a group of people. Now, this isn't designed to be played with a group of people, but we're going to be doing it for a performance we have coming up. So all those open rolls have to be super open. All right, we're going to move on to section C. Section C is in 6-8. What that means is the eighth note is worth one beat, and you have six eighth notes in a measure. So instead of counting the four, we're going to be counting the six, and we're using a different type of note to represent one beat, the eighth note instead of the quarter note. So the first measure, you would count it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now what I want you to know is that the roll at the end has a six written above it, so that means you have to fit six notes in that roll. The way to do that would be to play a triplet, and you diddle all this, and then it finishes with the downbeat of the next measure. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now if you take the roll, at, roll out and you make the roll a check pattern, it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's try playing that together without the roll, just the way I just did it. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's good. Let's do that one more time. One, two, ready, go. Good. Now we're going to add the roll. So we're, we don't change anything with what we did with our hands. The only thing we're going to change is that we're adding a roll to, to that. Okay. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So that was super sloppy because we just weren't open together. Um, let's try it again. One, two, ready, go. One, two. Five. All right, that was a little bit better, so we want to tighten that up. Let's do that one more time. <clears throat> one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, five. Okay, so practice that and it'll get better. Um, let's look at the second measure. Um, so now you have 16 notes in here, and the way these 16 notes are going to be counted is kind of like eighth notes would be in 4-4. Four, four. So you, now you're going to have one and two and three and four, five, six, one. Five. So if I count it out, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's try playing that together. One, two, ready, go. Four, five, six. All right, that was good. Let's do it one more time. One, two, ready, go. Four, five. All right, great. Okay, moving on. Third measure of C. Not too hard, you just got a couple pair diddle diddles, or sorry, um, double pair diddles. Let's do that. One, two, ready, go. All right, one more time. One, two, ready, go. Awesome. Next measure, it's measure uh, four of section C. You have some triplets in here. Five, six. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six. So me and you, let's try playing it. One, two, three, four, five, go. Four, five, six. Awesome, let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, go. Four, five, six. All right, so we were kind of sloppy there, but that's the idea. All right, so the next measure, which is measure five, uh, is the same thing as measure three. So you just have a couple double pair diddles. So for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over that since we've already done that. Now we're going to look at measure one, two, three, four, five, six. Measure six, you have a bunch of uh, accent diddles with a triplet. So let's do that. One, two, ready, go. There you go, one more time. One, two, ready, go. All right. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Measure seven, triplet, accent diddles, triplet, accent diddles. One, two, ready, go. 
Good, one more time. One, two, ready, go. Awesome. Okay, the next measure after that. Now that's the same thing as measure four, so we're gonna skip over that. Now we're at section D. Section D starts off the same way section C does, so we're gonna skip over that first measure. So the second measure of section D, you have three paradiddles, four, five, six. So let's do that. One, two, ready, go. Four, five, six. One, two, ready, go. Four, five, six. All right, so that's how that would go. And then the next measure after that, you have um, double paradiddles, but the second one is gonna have a flam on it. So let's try doing that. One, two, ready, go. Yeah, do it again. One, two, ready, go. All right, good. Measure after that, so this is the fourth measure of D. Five, so you have a uh, accent diddle with some singles. And then that same roll pattern we have at a the end of a lot of these measures. So let's try doing that. One, two, ready, go. Five. Good. Measure after that, you got a double paradiddle, flamma paradiddle. So we've already done that. It's in measure three. And then now we're on one, two, three, four, five, six. Measure six of D is really just a bunch of paradiddles. You have six of them. Some of them have accents, some of them don't. So actually all the paradiddles have accents at the beginning except for the third one. Let's try doing that together. One, two, ready, go. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. All right, one more time. One, two, ready, go. Okay, next measure. This is measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the same thing. Bunch of paradiddles. Some of the notes have accents, some of them don't. See that? One, two, ready, go. Two, ready, go. And then you have that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, measure eight, which we've done before already, except this one doesn't have the roll at the end, and I found with some students they have a hard time getting from that to the next measure. Here's how you count it. Five, six, one. So you have to let out the five and six count before you hit one of section E. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. So let's do that together, meaning. One, two, ready, go. Five, six. Ah, <laughs> rim shots hurt my ear. All right, so um, <clears throat> now we're at section E. Section E, the first measure and the sec second measure repeat themselves. This is how it goes. So me and you, let's try doing that. We're gonna play the first measure, the second measure, and then we're gonna repeat that. So this is the first two measures of E with the repeat that's written in there. One, two, ready, go. Awesome. So that's how that would go. Now this is kind of like what I might call a relief section in this piece because you come out of playing all this really kind of hard stuff in the 6-8 section and then suddenly have sort of a mindless melody at E up the speed. So it's kind of a mindless little melody there.
right? So moving on, this is the third measure of E. You have a lot of different things going on in this measure. So here's how I like to count it out. And I'm going to play on the rim so you can hear me count over the drum. One E and a triple, a triple, a three E and a four E and a. So I'm going to count it off and play it again. One, two, three, four. One E and a triple, a triple, a three E and a four E and a. So you have a lot of different things rhythmically going on here. So I'm going to play it on the drum now. One, two, three, four. One E and a. You think you can do that with me? Yeah. All right, let's do that. One, two, ready, go. E and. All right, good. One more time. One, two, ready, go. E and. Awesome. Okay, so now we're at measure one, two, three, four of E. Now four of E kind of leads into five of E, which leads into the first ending. Um, there's really like no secret to learning this. Basically, you just have a bunch of 60 notes and you just have to count out all the flam taps. And then it repeats back actually to the third measure of E. So instead of playing that together, what I want you to do is just read it out slow on your own. And I know at a slow tempo like that, it sounds kind of ridiculous, um, but uh, at a faster tempo, this is what it would be. So at a faster tempo, it doesn't appear to be as boring of a thing. All right, so when you go back and repeat it, you do all the same stuff, except now you have the second ending, and the second ending I do want to talk about. So this is the measure just before F, the second ending there. Now, they're all Swiss Army triplets, except for the second half of B2. You don't play the Swiss Army there, you just have a right, right, left accent. I didn't play that the first time when I did it, but it goes like this. So if you're gonna be really picky, pay attention to all those accents. Go. Yeah, this is one of those measures you got to spend a lot of time on. One, two, ready, go. Okay, one more time for practicing. Ready, go. Now, for the people watching this video, I understand that I'm not spending a whole lot of time on each section. Um, what you need to do is, thankfully, this is video technology, so if there's a section you want to go back and work on, repeat back to that. Just rewind the video back to the part that you want to work on. Okay, so moving on to F. F starts out the same way E is, those first two measures. So we don't really need to go, um, go, go over those. This is kind of like going back to that relief section where it's sort of like a break from all the complicated stuff. Okay, so now we have a bunch of flam accent stuff. All right, so that's a lot. That's a lot to go and play cold like I just did. Um, so the cool thing about it, this is the third measure of F. So measure three and measure four are actually the same thing. So if we slow it down, So notice that you have flam accents, but then the last flams at the end are just four unaccented flams. Let's try playing that together. One, two, ready, go. One more time. One, two, ready, go. All right, so now let's actually take the repeat. So you're going to play it and then play it again. 
two, ready, go. Ready, go. All right, so work on that. Rewind that play as many times as you need to. Now, the way the uh, next measure works with the first setting. Actually, we can treat that by itself. So it's a two beat lick. That, you re that repeats itself. Slow. Let's do that. One, two, ready, go. All right, one more time. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so the first ending That's the rhythm your right hand's playing. And that's important because the left hand doesn't change. The left hand just does this the whole time. For some people, it makes it easier to learn. Let's try playing that. One, two, ready, go. One, two, ready, go. Yeah, <laughs> let's just always stop on downbeats. Sometimes I don't always do that, but we'll always stop on downbeats. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so um, that's the first ending. The second ending is, this is again, kind of like a rhythm. All right, now we're on the third page, which is section G. Section G is this infamous backsticking section. So let me talk about the backsticking really quick. So if you're playing traditional grip, the way that I'm playing traditional grip, um, the tendency is to want to exaggerate your body movement, but you know when you get this thing up to speed, you can't move your body all that much. So you need to kind of micromanage your movements. Um, so the right-handed back sticking just does that. You just flip the stick over. You don't change your grip. You're just flipping the stick over, and you actually hit the drum with your wrist. So what I'm doing right now is probably a good exercise for it. Train you to go back and forth between the back sticking and a regular stroke. And if you look at the way I'm moving, you see I'm moving, but I'm not moving a whole lot. That the trick is is not moving very much. Now the challenge here is doing it in the left hand. Now I'm kind of hitting this music stand a little bit. Let me turn over. So I'm not actually changing my grip here. I'm just bringing my wrist over and I'm pulling the stick in. So I'm not changing my grip at all. And you want to watch out for that because I see a lot of people change their grip when they try to do this stuff and then it just messes them up when, when they have to go back and playing uh, you know, regular without back sticking. Now something I do want to point out is when you come back after a back stick, you want to come back to a normal technique that you would use. Some people will do this and whip that left hand in there. Um, I'm not a big fan of that personally. I'm more of a fan of after you get done with your back sticking part, get back to set. Try to get your technique as consistent as possible. So going over the first measure, I've played it a bunch of times. Let's try doing that. One, two, ready. 
All right, one more time. One, two, ready, go. Now let's play the measure twice, okay? So two times through that measure. One, two, ready, go. All right, good. Um, so now, uh, th that was the first two measures of G, so the third measure is. Let's do that. One, two, ready, go. Two, ready, go. Two, ready, go. Okay, then the fourth measure of G. I see sometimes people make the mistake of playing two back sticks in this section. People get lazy and don't read the whole thing and want to do that. That's not correct. You actually go back to a regular flam. Let's play that. Ready, go. One, two, last time. Ready, go. Okay. Um, moving on. So this would be the fifth measure of G. You got more of this back sticking stuff. That's pretty easy. I don't think I need to go over that. But uh, be careful that that last flam tap isn't a backstick flam tap. Sometimes people get lazy and don't read it right. It's a regular flam. Oh, I wanted to do it. That's what it is. Okay, so now you have the uh, backsticking with the triplet stuff. So there's a bunch of ways you can think of this to make your life easy, depending on how you like to think about your drumming. Um, I'm not going to get into all the different ways you can think about it, but if you want to look at it one beat at a time, one beat at a time, you just have a right, left, right, then you have a left, right, right, then a left, right, left, and then right, left, left. So pay attention to the back sticking there. My recommendation is to do this really slow all together after you've worked it out one beat at a time the way I just did it. So that's my recommendation, is to play it really slow, work it out like that. Memorize it like you might memorize a rudiment. That's a lick. So let's try doing that together. We'll go about this fast. Two, ready, go. All right, that's pretty good. And then you have this thing again. I don't need to go over that. And then the next measure is the same thing. But you got measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Measure nine. Again, I recommend doing this one beat at a time. So you would have right, left, left, and then right, left, right, left, right, right left, right, left. When you put it together slow, oh, my bad. Let's try playing that together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, ready, go. So yeah, treat that like a rudiment, like the other thing. Then at measure 10, We've been over that already. Then measure 11, you have a flam, left, left. So I recommend practicing this the same way I did the other one, one beat at a time. And then once you figure that out. Let's try doing that. One, two, ready. All right, and then uh, after that, you got some Swiss Army stuff. You should be able to play that. Then you have that relief section again.
And then you have the long roll. It's a four measure long roll. Did I count that correctly? I think I did. Thank you, missed one. Oh, did I miss one? I don't think I need to play that slow. You should be able to play that roll. Just remember to work it out slow and then speed it up when you have everything else down. Then the next part you have is this. So this is two measures before J. This is like one of those sort of relief sections in a sense. So it's not that hard to play, but it's got a melody to it that I think is pretty important. You got So it's got kind of a melody there. Let's try playing it a little slower. We'll go about this fast. Those two measures, and then it, they actually repeat themselves, so let's repeat that, okay? One, two, ready, go. Yeah, and you gotta recover, you know? If you're playing in a group and you make a mistake and you drop out, jump back in there, because a lot of times people won't even notice that you messed up. All right, so now you're at J, and this is what I call the eight on a hand section, because you're basically playing eight on a hand for the right hand, and then the left hand's doing the same thing, but you start with a flam. Now I'm not going to really go over this because it's pretty easy stuff to read, but here's what I want you to definitely notice is that at the beginning of each hand change there's an accent. The other thing I want to mention is this is one of those sections that when you play this piece up to speed, you're probably already tired by now, you're gassed, and you might be tense in your arms. This is one of those sections you want to loosen up on but still have control. Now I'll admit that I'm not as, uh, I don't have my chops up in my traditional grip anymore like I used to, so I'm using my arm a little bit, but I don't want you to do that. I don't recommend that. You wanna use the rebound of the stick and your fingers in your traditional grip. Try to stay away from using your arm, that's not a good thing. Kinda of the same thing in the right hand. Try to isolate it down to your fingers. Try to relax in this section and worry about your sound quality. You don't want your notes to sound louder and softer. You want them to be all the same. All right, so we're going to move on to K. K starts off with that relief thing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually similar to the relief thing, but it's not. It's actually a different thing. Now this is the end of your piece, so I think it's pretty important that this is strong. Um, my philosophy or strategy for learning solos is to start at the beginning and then start at the end and practice and work your way towards the middle because my idea is this, is by the time you have to perform it, whatever it is, an audition or performance or whatever, you want your beginning statement and your ending statement to be your strongest. If you're going to fudge anything and allow yourself mistakes somewhere, it's got to be in the middle. Um, because people will remember how you start and they will re remember how you end, but if you make little mistakes and stuff in the middle, if you're going to allow some mistakes, those are more forgivable and less noticeable. So that's just a strategy and it works well. Uh, but I'm not advocating being a, uh, a player who makes mistakes. You want to be as perfect as you can.
but if you're gonna you know, have something be weak, let it be the middle. So always start with the beginning and the end. So the ending is your last name. This is the last thing that they're gonna remember about what you did. So you wanna make sure this is super strong. You want your rules all, di um, all open. You want those accents nice and strong. You want your rhythm to be accurate. And I have weak chops, so you want to practice it and be better than me because I'm not awesome right now. So, me and you, let's try doing this, but we'll go about this fast. So, uh, the whole last statement, which is K. One, two, ready, go. All right, let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. So you wanna watch out that uh, you're not changing your tempo during stuff um, while you do it. Especially if you're playing in a group. Because if you're playing in a group and your tempo's fluctuating a little bit, it's going to sound really fuzzy like me and you just did. All right. It's not a knock. I'm just telling you how to get better. All right. So we just went over every section of Tornado. Your job watching this is to go through each section and work on the things that are pertinent for you. Um, I hope to have a performance video of me or a student or somebody performing this whole thing at various tempos for reference and so you can practice along with it if you'd like. On YouTube, I'm aware there's lots of people who have performances of this on YouTube. A lot of them are kind of rushed and hurried and not very open. Um, so my concern is that we fix those things. You wanna be open, you don't want this thing to sound rushed or hurried. You want your accents to pop out, you want your unaccented notes to be soft. You want your dynamics to be there. I didn't really address dynamics right now in this video. Perhaps in another video I will. Right now I'm more concerned about unaccented notes and accented notes and accuracy with the rhythms and making sure the rolls are open, especially if you're playing in a group with other people.